Is that it? I think this might be recording. Is it recording? Are you recording? Maybe. Here, press it again and maybe we'll be Ooh. outside. Ooh, it's filming. <laughs> so this is my very first video ever. And what inspired me to do this video was because I took up Jazza's challenge of the month. And this month's theme is Lord of the Rings meets Harry Potter. So it's like a fan art crossover. And for the crossover, I'm doing Harry Potter in Lord of the Rings. And this is <laughs> some of my original sketching work. So when I first want to get an idea down, I just kind of throw it out. So this is Harry as Frodo. Like, it looks terrible, but that's the way you get an idea out, is you just throw it on the paper as fast as you can before you get it. And this is inspired by one of my favorite scenes from the movie, and I love the Dead Marshes. So that's a little bit morbid, but basically the Dead Marshes are this um, area where the first battle against Mordor, they buried their dead in this field, and later it turned into a marsh. And you might remember it because Frodo almost goes down and joins the dead, but Sam saves him. Um, and Gollum basically tells them, don't follow the lights, because the lights are candles of the dead, and if you follow those lights, if you get entranced by them and reach out to the dead, they'll take you down there to be with them forever. But instead of doing actual dead, I thought it would be cool to do uh, the mermaids from Harry Potter. So they're very creepy mermaids, they're not, and I kind of decided to pull from some more mermaid mythology of pulling sailors down to the deep to kill them and be with them forever or turn them into mermen. That kind of more dark little mermaid. Um, now this idea down, I started refining the sketch over the next few days. This is my final sketch that I used. Um, so you'll see this in a minute that I've transferred it onto watercolor paper. And I have two mermaids um, there in the marsh. And then Harry is kind of like been entranced by the lights and now the mermaids and they're about to reach out and grab him and pull him down. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to skip to doing a voiceover. Um, that way you don't have to watch me paint in real time for several hours. Um, you might notice my cats coming in and out through the video. They enjoy watching me paint or more likely they enjoy looking for an op opening to attack a paintbrush. For this painting, I'm using Windsor and Newton Professional Watercolors. I really like these watercolors. They have a good color and they re-wet really well. Um, and I'm just using some general fairly crappy brushes that I picked up in packs from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. Overall, I'm really happy with how this painting turned out and I enjoyed doing it and I enjoyed painting along with my cats. In fact, in a second, Hattie's about to cause some mayhem with the painting. I was mixing a color and she decided that she wanted to jump and knock it all over, so. Hattie! Luckily for Hattie, she's super cute. So I think I'll keep her, even if she does cause some trouble every now and then. But for those that know me, know how much I adore Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Um, I love them both, and I'm a huge, huge fan of this crossover idea. And I just had to paint something, especially after the idea came to me. Normally I don't participate in challenges or anything like that because I'm a little bit shy to show my artwork. but. I started thinking after I watched Jazz's challenge video, and I was like, huh, I wonder what you could do for a unique Harry Potter Lord of the Rings crossover. And then I remembered one of my favorite scenes from Lord of the Rings is the Dead Marsh scene where Frodo becomes entranced by the lights and is almost pulled down to join the dead forever. And I was like, oh, that's such a cool scene. I wonder how I could work that in. And then I thought of the mermaids from Harry Potter replacing the dead. And of course, in popular culture, mermaids range from the Little Mermaid, um, who's beautiful and princess-like, all the way down to kind of this almost demonic 
creature who's very skeletal and pulls sailors down to their death. And I really wanted to kind of play off of that idea here that perhaps the mermaids from Harry Potter are a little bit darker than we thought they were. So in my painting, the lights, um, which I actually, they're the kind of yellow circles you see, those are going to be the lights. I used a product called Frisket or Misket. You might have heard of it named either. And this product is something that you can paint onto a watercolor paper and after it is completely dry, it's kind of sticky, but it stops watercolor color from getting on the paper. So you can kind of see it standing out really well right now. Once I peel it off of my paper, it's going to leave just a white circle, which is going to kind of be the lights that Harry saw and became interested in and entranced by and followed to these ill-meaning mermaids. So now that I've talked about the idea behind the piece, I'll talk about the watercolor and the execution of the piece a little bit more in detail. Watercolor is one of my favorite mediums to use because I love being able to build up layer upon layer of color and having the layers of color from the bottom show through the top. This buildup of color and layering is really important for the water, especially in my piece. Um, Tolkien described the water of the dead marshes as kind of this really dark, oily looking water. And in the dead marshes, the only green was the algae that was growing on top of the water. So for my interpretation, of the water, I basically wanted it to kind of look like an oil spill. And you can see me working on the water now. And I'm trying to build up these colors so you can see a little bit of green and blue and white. And now I'm not actually putting paint down, I'm actually taking paint off with a wet brush and allowing more of the white of the paper to show through to kind of give me the ripple effects around the mermaid. And I actually think that was my favorite part of the entire picture was working on the ripples and how the water came out. Although I'm really happy with how the water turned out and I'm pretty happy with how the mermaids themselves turn out, there are a few things in this drawing that I'm not crazy about and one of them is actually the figure of Harry himself. I'm still not thrilled with how my figures look even though I've been doing art for several years so one thing I would like to get better at is figure drawing especially the hands of the figures. They're kind of a weak spot of mine and I feel like that's a weak spot of many artists. But right now I'm using some colored pencils to go in and add a little bit more fine detail. Now you can get fine detail with watercolor, don't get me wrong, and there are plenty of artists who use watercolor only. But by that same thread there are plenty of artists who will add to their watercolor by using a little bit of colored pencil. Now the colored pencil can actually help you get some very fine details that paint can't. Or if you're a little bit inexperienced with watercolor but more experienced with pencil art, they can definitely help polish up and finish off your piece. Now I'm not quite done with paint yet. As you see, I haven't peeled off those areas of misket or frisket. I'm actually about to peel them off here in a second and it's the most satisfying thing when you pull them off but you can see how it left this like perfect circle of white. I'm actually going back in with some kind of green paint. I kind of want them to be an eerie glowing green ball but without that I probably wouldn't have been able to get the perfect circles. I'm definitely not a perfect watercolorist by any means and sometimes paint goes where I don't intend it to go or sometimes my cat jumps and makes it all spill. So definitely using Frisket is a good decision for me personally. But we're coming up on the end of this video. Thank you so much if you watched till this point. Um, this is my first video, so I don't know what kind of reception I'll get. But if you really like this, I hope to be able to post more videos in the future. Um, so you can subscribe to my channel or give the video a like. And I hope this has inspired you to make really cool watercolor art of your own. Um, thank you so much and thanks for watching.